Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, April 4th, 2017 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. It's just a week since Apple released iOS 10.3, so it was a surprise that today Apple actually already released the next version of iOS, iOS iOS.10.3.1. This update fixes one single vulnerability. It does allow, if exploited, to execute a random code on the Wi-Fi chip. So all it takes is for the attacker to be in range of the victim and then launch this exploit and the attacker would be able to execute arbitrary code. Certainly something you do want to update rather quickly. Then, of course, uh, Google releasing SHA-1 collisions a few weeks ago was a pretty big deal. But one question a lot of people are always asking is, how do you actually take advantage of uh, these collisions? Well, uh, we have a nice guest diary today by Paul Bolton, and he explains how to do this using ISO images, where you can create two ISO images, one evil, one benign. They both end up with this same SHA-1 hash by taking advantage of uh, these collision data blobs that uh, Google found. The basic trick here is that once I can create a document with one of the data blobs that Google found, I can just swap these data blobs and the overall SHA-1 checksum of that particular document does not change. So now I just need something inside the document that will make this document act differently depending on which one of these blobs I have included. So this basic technique can be applied to many other data formats that don't really worry about having a blob of random data being placed somewhere and that are able to have a condition based on which blob is included. And if Microsoft Defender alerted you this weekend about the blubber worm, uh, well, it's most likely a false positive. Apparently, Microsoft Defender did flag uh, various files with the signature over the weekend. Now, they fixed the signature distribution. It should be all good now. But uh, if you had this pop up, it was a false positive. And one of my interests, of course, remains web application security. That's why I teach uh, the class we have for that. And also why I keep mentioning sort of some of these uh, basic web application security topics. The latest one is how to crack a weak session secret. Now, session secrets are typically used to do things like digitally sign or encrypt cookies. If you have to store data on the client, not a great idea in the first place, but sometimes you can't avoid it, then you have to digitally sign it. And of course, if you sign data like this, uh, you need a key in order to accomplish this. Well, a uh, simple symmetric cryptography can work here if it's done right, because really only the web server needs to know the secret. And that leads to the second point, since only the web server needs to know the secret, there is really no point in having a simple secret. It's very easy. It's it's as easy to just have a random string and a long random string and uh, as opposed to a simple word. Well, uh, that's not what's necessarily happening. A great blog post here by Martin Fowler about how to brute force some of these session secrets and of course some examples with that on how this was used to detect vulnerabilities in web applications. And my last item isn't exactly breaking news, but a good reminder that this is still happening. A bleeping computer has a nice analysis of Skype malvertising that advertises a fake flash player. There's also a rather large list of malicious domains associated with this. I would actually recommend not just to use this as a block list. Uh, Yes, it may help you find the one or the other infected machines, but there are probably many more that are not listed here that are being used by schemes like this. Fake flash players also always uh, pop up with Mac hosts, in particular since more recent versions of OS X and Mac OS do not include a flash player by default. That makes 
Apple or Mac users uh, one of the targets for these fake Flash Player advertisements. Well, and that's it for today. As usual, if you like this podcast, tell your friends about it, tweet about it, or just leave a good review on iTunes or whatever site you're using to download this podcast. Any comments, uh, please send them to me via the ISC contact form. That's it for today. And thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.